I'm CK. Today we have another one from Synthrotech. It's their Sequence 8 sequencer. Looks interesting and having multiple sequencers is always a party time. So we'll take a look at it, put it together and see how it works. And I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the bag. Pick this up from Amazon. Expected by AH5823. So this was packed a couple of days before the one I did a little while ago. Let's see what we got. Sequence 8. Looks like we've got 8 steps. I, I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe that's a pot for the uh, note value. Or maybe that's a pot for the note value. I don't know. Probably some LEDs there. Hold mom. I don't think that's telling you to appreciate your mother. I think that's hold momentary. Hold hard. Step. Clock. Switch. Reset. Random. Random's always good. Limit. 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 Rate. 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 Random rate. CV1. CV2. CV3. Click in. Oh, clock in. Clock out. And reset. Now let's look at the circuit boards. Looks like there are multiple of them. Oops. And we can figure out some of these things. Back is fine. Got place for two pin headers. Uh, all the holes are through hole plated. So yeah, these are all pots. Again, probably to set the note values. I'm not certain. And then underneath them is those jacks. RST. RST. What would RST stand for? Oh no, it's it's jacks. Those are jacks. So I guess you can pull out each individual note if you want. And we've got switch, switch, switch. I mean, those are momentary switches. Then we've got real switches. Then more pots for these. And more jacks down here for all these outputs. Get that board out. And it's got a uh, couple, of, couple of three chips. It's got some op amps. It's, uh, I don't know what else it has. I'm going to have to look up some of these chip numbers. Uh, random stuff, power supply. Let's see what we have in here. Typical Synthrotech data sheet. And again, if you're gonna print resistor so somebody could potentially read the color values, get a good printer. This, this, you can't rely on those colors there, guys. Nothing particularly interesting on that side and nothing on the other side. I'm sure they have a build guide on their website and we will take a look at that. It doesn't look like a whole ton of parts really as such things go. Set that over there and we'll get a little bin for the mechanical bits. And the knobs are good, very good. They're brass inserts with brass set screws which I love. Now, boo-hoo, they didn't take the panel nut jacks off the uh, the panel nuts off the jacks or the screws, so I have to actually do it. Boo-hoo, I'm so lazy. I actually would do that off camera because you don't need to watch me take panel nuts off components. They're using dual pin headers, which I also like because it's much easier to get them flatter or as flat as possible and improve the alignment of the uh, two boards, makes it much less difficult to fight. I'm going to take a quick look at these jacks and see if they're all the same value. And they are not all the same value. 
so we will have to this one oh it's stamped in the metal I thought it didn't have a value on it uh, that means we definitely need to refer to either this to tell us where things go even though again it's kind of badly printed guys but in general it looks dandy so we'll get the soldering iron heated up I will get the build guide up I assume it exists if it doesn't oh here's all the chips and sockets inside this I won't open that up yet I will assume they have a build guide if not we'll figure it out of course back in a bit Synthrotech does have a build guide on their website for this pretty straightforward and again because it's a pretty straightforward build interesting that you can power this three ways you can power this euro rack four pin frac right angle DC or 9 volt battery I would bet the 9 volt battery doesn't last long and the on off switch is only necessary for 9 volt or the 2.1 DC jack so we're not going to be putting that on okay so the build guide just says do the resistors and diodes, do the sockets, capacitors, and so on, do the headers, do that. It doesn't list the specific placements. And they refer what the yeah, and they refer you to the bill of materials for actual placement. So we're gonna start with all the 1K resistors. So let me get them all out here. Let's see. So we'll put one of these on to begin with so we can see how the board takes solder and we'll start with R1 and we'll look on here and okay so this board starts with one. These are quarter, these are it says quarter watt resistors, these are actually half watt resistors. So they're eh, they stick out, they're a little harder to get through the holes because I think the circuit board was designed for quarter watts. There we go. Look on the other side to make to see if the solder weeped through, and it did. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, nothing much more to say about resistors and also diodes, but uh, I may come back online before I put those on. So I will mute the dialog and play it this section back in fast motion and probably cut some of it out which gives you a chance to enjoy resistor time resistor time is done for this kit with one interesting bit here Notice up here, here's R9. Uh, there is no R9 listed in the build materials, and there are no extra resistors in the kit. So, fortunately, they have a schematic on their site. And if we look over here, R9 is right here, and you can see it on the back of the board to, uh, where is it, where'd it go? R9's right here coming off the LED and going to ground and that's what we're seeing here and if we look closer it's coming from the 9 volt battery clip so uh, I don't even know if there'll be an LED available for that so we'll see now we're going to put the diodes in pretty much the same story as the resistors, we'll get all the 4148s out first. Sure are a bunch of them, aren't there? And that's all the diodes on. Now we're going to put all the caps on and voltage regulator and the IC sockets. So I'm going to do this board first, which is the two 
Actually, I'm not, but where are we on electrolytics? The electrolytics are all one microfarad, so we don't have to worry about not having or putting the wrong one in the wrong right place. You know what I mean. Now, where's the other board? I'm not going to put the two remaining electrolytics on because they're higher than anything else. I'm going to put all the sockets on next. And they are in here. Now we'll do the caps. We've got... God darn... What are you doing here? My iPad fell over. We've got a bunch of 104s and then a 224. Uh, so we got to make sure I don't get confused there. There's the 224. There's the 224. I'm going to put that one in first. Uh, that's... I see four, and it's, oh, bridge I see four, pins four, and eleven. Uh, huh, okay, we'll do that later. I may do that last because I'm going to be manipulating the board until then. So uh, let me put a I'm going to put a red circle or highlight on here telling me I still need to do that because I don't want to do that until I've got all, all the board done and then I'll bridge the pins. And I'll show you, I, I may make a chapter mark on that uh, so you can see what I will be doing to do that. But these are all our standard 104s. And now I'll put these two electrolytics, again, long lead, in the hole that's got the plus sign next to it. And they alternate. One's got the plus on the bottom, one's got the plus on the top. So always just look. Let's see what else can we put in here. I think we've got all the standard components. Again, I'm going to come back and do that. Uh, oh, they have a picture of the bridge, too, so you can see where to actually do it. Uh, I'm going to actually look up. Why don't I do that right now? So uh, that is... Quad 16 volt 3 megahertz operational amplifier. So we can actually do that now. Uh, I just have to be careful with my fingers when I'm pushing the sockets in. So here's IC4, and I'm putting this uh, tweezer in here to let me know that that's where I'm going to be working. And we're going to be going to 4 to 11. So where's my pointy thing? Well, I've got it down here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that to that. I'm going to actually mark the board. so I know what I'm doing. Always be marking and checking and double checking and I'm going to count again just 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we're going to be bridging those. Let me get a good idea of what I need. Okay, I can trim right about here. Tweezers. While I'm here on those, we'll solder these two electrolytics. Now we'll do the pin headers, and that means we're going into another or other bag. I'm not putting the ICs on yet. Now I'll do the mail pin headers same way. And that's all those pin headers. Now we'll put the power connector on. Did he? Have? Yeah, they had it. We're just about. The notch goes facing outside of the board. And the power regulator, the voltage regulator. This is a 78L05, so 5 volt voltage regulator. Making sure that the flat side is pointed the right way. And that board is all the way populated. There are uh, various things missing, like the frac connector, the 9 volt battery connector, the uh, DC uh, center positive connector, and the on off switch because they're not used in the Iraq version. Also, these holes are test points, so you don't have to worry about those. So that's it. I got to go in and feed the cats, and we'll start on the pots and knobs next. And again, we're done with this board. We're not putting the power switch in. We're not putting the 9 volt in. We're not putting the uh, DC power plug in. So we'll move on to our pots and knobs board and we'll see what we got. Where I'm going to set everything in place. I'm going to start with the LEDs because I want to see if they gave me an LED for this spot. Uh, I don't know if they did because uh, again they didn't give me the resistor and the power, it's a power LED indication LED. I'm sorry, I'm fumbling. I'm trying to get this screw out of the tape and I'm failing. Uh, and there's no There's no place for you to see that through here unless I drill a hole through it, and I'm not going to do that. So if it has one, it has one. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then we're going to put the LEDs on first. And all the LEDs, the long leg, the anode leg, goes in the square hole. And I'm doing this, again, just because I want to see if there's an actual power if they gave me an actual power LED. So let me put these on. Now they did not give us a power LED. We'll just go ahead and put the potentiometers on. Oh, first thing we're going to do, hold on, I'm going to pause the cameras because i got to take the panel nuts off. The potentiometers and the CV jacks, and nobody wants to see me do that. And we're back, so now we'll continue stuffing. I, all the pots are the same, so we can just put them in. And I put the pot, pots on before the jacks because the pots often click into the board. Oops, pin a pin. The pots often click when they go onto the board, and if they click with enough oomph, any jack you've put in will bounce out and you have to put back on. 
Again, we are certainly not soldering anything yet because we got to get the front panel on and make sure everything is aligned properly. But we'll put all the jacks and all the pots on. There's all the pots and jacks on, and if you're unsure about which way the pots go on and before you fumble around a lot, just the, uh, where the silver siding rolls over the top, uh, that will go on the bottom, just as is shown here. We've got three push buttons. These are momentaries. They are not locking. And then we've got well it says I mean we've got three switches. Where did I put the other switches? What the heck? I don't have all I don't have all three switches. Well, that's no good. I'm going to pause the cameras a little bit and try and figure out where these switches went, if I even had them. I went back through the video and uh, looking at the bag and how I went through everything at the beginning. Uh, there were not three switches, there was only the one. I sent a note to Synthrotech about that. Uh, haven't heard back from them yet, and it's been about a, I don't know, a day, day and a half, so I'm not really expecting a rapid response. But I have some switches, double pole, uh, single pole, double throws, uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, they're paddles instead of the cylinders that the one they gave us was, but that doesn't matter. But that also means I'm going to use three of them instead of just two because I don't want to have one cylindrical switch handle and three non-cylindricals. I want them to be all the same. So now we're going to put the front panel on in prep for these little push buttons are going to I think the little push buttons are going to drive me crazy trying to get them on but we'll see first we got to get all the pots through where's my pokey thing Sequencers, just as a rule, tend to be a little harder to get the front panel on. Ouch! Poked myself with an LED lead. Uh, simply because they've got so many jacks and knobs often. See, these switches have a little high rise in the center that makes them, the push buttons, that makes them hard to get aligned. So I'm going to fiddle with this. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch me fiddling, but you can, I'm not going to cut the video out. There we go. Clicked right on down. Just needed a little encouragement. Now i got to get all the jacks down. One or two of them needs a little encouragement too.
Here we go. Now we're all put together, except for the LEDs, and I'm not going to do anything about the LEDs quite yet. I'm going to look here on the back and make sure all my pins went through, and they did. The only challenge here is these push buttons have a lot of slop, so we're going to have to trap them. I could have put the lower locking nut on them so I didn't have to try and trap them, but uh, I often don't do that. I don't particularly care. It, it'll be easy enough to do. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to solder this support leg on that pot, and I'm going to solder this support leg on this pot, And then I'm going to take two panel nuts and screw these down, not tight, just snug. And that will keep everything in place while I solder stuff. And I'll figure out how to, uh, these paddle switches also need something to support them while you solder them on. And in fact, they're high enough that I don't have to worry about it, the height of the paddle. Make sure that they'll stay in place the way I want them to. So let me do one. That's enough to hold them in place so they won't be flopping around. Now we're going to want to do something on these push buttons. So I've got a little foam I'll put there, and that makes those protrude. I'm actually going to get some thicker solder for these support legs. I'll go to my 40, 41. Now all the switches are locked down, so as I shake this, don't hear anything except a little bit from the LEDs. So I'm going to do all the pots the uh, I'm going to do all the connections again. I'm, let me drop all the LEDs through their respective holes. Okay, everything is ready for soldering. So this will be quite a bit of soldering, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill the cameras while I'm doing that because it'll just be ten minutes of solder. All the soldering is done. So I'm going to, since there was so much, I'm going to go over it. I mean, I usually do this, but I'm triple checking here to make sure I got everything. Oops, see, I missed one right there. Missed one of the LEDs. That's why I always do this, because no matter how many times, how experienced you are, part of experience is double checking and this one, this joint is not great so I'll redo that one. Now everything is soldered. So the next step will be to put all the panel nuts on. And that is all the panel nuts. And as I was going along, just so you know, uh, for the pots, I use a 10 millimeter socket to screw those down. It's also for these push buttons. For these switches, I use an 8 millimeter socket. And for the jacks, there's this tool with two little metal pins in it that grab the notches, and I got this from uh, Thonk. I forget the name of the product, but I'm sure you can probably find it. Now we'll put all the knobs on, and so we're going to turn everything fully counterclockwise. All right, there's all the knobs on, and they're kind of aligned with each other, but some of them are a little off. I don't care. Now we'll find that... Where did I put the... Oh! 
I've been holding off on this, I almost forgot. Now we have to put the uh, chips in the right place, and i got to go get my piece of paper. Now, unfortunately, and again, this is just... They have all the chips, but they don't say what positions they go in. They don't have uh, IC1, IC whatever for that. I mean, obviously the 16 pin, you know, only goes in the 16 pin. So you have to look through the socket because it is printed on the board. But they should have it listed on here too. So we'll do the 4117. Bend the legs in a little bit against the side of my workbench. Check for bent pins. This is what I, I just said it. I gotta say it again. 4017. There it is. And there's all the chips in with the notches pointed the correct way. Does that need to be seated a little more? Nah, that's good. Now we will make the two boards. I didn't want to do that until I was all done. That's good. Now we take our 16 pin connector and put it in like so. And there we go. That's the front, the side, oops, that's not quite seated, the side, the back, the other side, the top, where you can see my LED for power, which is not normally used on the air rack, and the bottom. Now we'll put it in the rack and see how she sequences. Oh, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. Uh, what does this say? Testing procedures. Oh, okay, we can do this all in the rack. There's no uh, pots to twiddle or whatever, so we can do it all in the rack. So we'll get it in the rack and start messing about. All right, we're in the rack. Let's power up and see what happens. We got some lights blinking. That's good. So we've got things sequencing along. But first thing we want to do is when we make sure all the three CV outlets are working correctly, plug a cable into CV0. Let me grab one of these numerous cables. Not CV0, CV1 output. And then put it in volts per octave on my this uh, VCO that I'm going to be using to test and we'll plug that in here and that's not a noise associated with this that's my water pump that keeps my water pressure up but we've got a nice stable tone and if I change CV1 I mean knob 1 I should. Okay. Okay, so this is just verifying that uh, our attenuator is not working incorrectly because we've pulled all the voltage off that. So the attenuator is working fine. Uh, Do hold hard up, and we're stuck on one. And now we should be able to get something as we turn the attenuator. Oh, we want this one all the way up still. Now, huh? Not getting what I thought I would get. Make 
sure I'm doing the right thing here. The CV2 is working fine. CV3 is working fine. But CV1 is not right now. I don't know why. Let me turn that all the way up. Nope. Huh. So CV1 is not... I'm just checking all... Okay, so that's all working. CV1's not working. Let me try CV2 again. Turn the rate down. So that's all working. Uh, did that, except for number one. Now we've got rate coarse and rate fine, which is rate coarse and rate fine. And of course, here we go, rate coarse. Makes it go very fast. I set it down here in the middle. Now use rate fine. And that's coming up. And there goes my stupid water heater. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pause the test right now. Okay, water heater's back off. And while we were gone, I uh, took it out of the rack, double checked all the connections around here and nothing seems to be in error. Looking at the schematic, it looks like IC4 is what's doing the output to these three CVs and I couldn't see any bent pins. I couldn't see any problems with that either. But obviously other people have gotten this to work fine so I'm not going to worry about it. I still have CV2 and 3 to do lots of stuff with. I'm going to slow the clock down a little bit. And I'm going to go into random, and that should, that's random rate. Let's see what it says about that. I... Random switch up, slowly change random rate until you notice that things jump around randomly. Well, I'm not hearing any randomness out of that, but that's okay. Maybe. Do a re 
said. So one thing I'm going to do next is just test the clock in. I'm going to There we go. Okay. It doesn't take a pulse, interestingly enough. It take I had to go to the sawtooth on the LFO to change the rate. So that's interesting. Now I'm going to pull this out and put it in there. So yeah, you can you can pull every individual uh, step out if you want to. So you can get it going pretty fast with an external clock. Again, as I put that, as I put that in, I can go. That's pretty fast. The other thing you might notice here is our uh, voltage draw, amp, amp draw is pretty low, eight milliamps. That's pretty pretty power efficient. So there it is, uh, except for this not working correctly, and I don't know why that is. Uh, might have been something I do I've done, so I'm not going to call that a problem. But it works fine. It'll be a handy little sequencer in your rack. Uh, again, the switches, having uh, two switches missing was just a minor uh, problem because I had spares. So it's a fine little unit. I'll keep poking at CV1 to see if I can figure out what could be wrong with it. I may uh, change the chip out uh, if I have one. If I don't have one, I'll order one. And if I do that, I'll update the video, or actually I'll post a supplementary video about that. But another Pretty good unit from Synthrotech. Only thing I'd like is it a little narrower, but Kesara Sara on that one. I think having all these outputs, individual outputs, probably is what's causing it to be as wide as it is. So that's it, and I hope you enjoyed the video.